Good evening, everyone. Brian Newbert here from GoldenBlack.com, live in Little Caesars Arena here in Detroit, um, where the place is being torn down uh, after Purdue's uh, win over Tennessee, securing the Boilermakers' first Final Four appearance uh, since 1980. Uh, as I said, everything's been torn down out there. It has taken my iPhone charger with it. Uh, my phone is currently at 19%, and I'm the sort of person who flips out when his phone gets to 70% because I'm that OCD. So my mind is going to be on my phone battery here while I film this video, so you're going to have to bear with me here. Um, again, Purdue, maybe not again, I haven't said the score. Uh, Purdue beats Tennessee 72-66 to uh, here to win the Midwest Regional, again, to claim uh, Purdue's first Final Four berth uh, since I was three years old, and I'm now a very old, graying, bent-over old man. Um, so it's been a very, it's been a long time coming for Purdue. It's the proverbial um, albatross being dashed. We continue to sully the good name of the albatross here in these videos. Uh, I should mention thank you so much as always to the Premium Club Hotel for your support. Text me the address of your Phoenix location if you could. I know there's one down there somewhere. Uh, I need a hotel for next week or for this week uh, in Glendale or a surrounding community. Um, I'm, let's start taking my job seriously here for a moment. Um, there was, but only for a moment, there was a certain inevitability about this team uh, that I think really started to surface in Honolulu where they were just, they had this look in their eye, you know, and th something bigger was going on here. Uh, and I, I, I didn't really want to make too much of it early in that season, but when they won the Maui Invitational, it just felt like this wasn't a season. This wasn't an opportunity. This was a mission. And the mission, I don't want to say it was completed today because Purdue will tell you that they want to win a national championship. They can win a national championship, and both of those things are valid. Purdue can win a national championship. Um, but just getting to the Final Four, this is, this is a really big deal for the program, obviously. It's something they've been waiting a very, very long time. To, uh, to do, and uh, the mission was accomplished here today, um, much to the delight, obviously, of a very, very pro Purdue crowd here in Detroit. Obviously, uh, this is a very big deal for a school that takes basketball very, very seriously and has been probably as Final Four hungry a fan base as there is in the country, probably the most Final Four hungry uh, fan base in the country. Um, But no, there was something with this team, with the way they handled success here in this NCAA tournament, the standard they held themselves to, the proverbial look in their eyes. I always use that term. You know it when you see it. You know, you can't really describe it, but you know it when you see it. Um, that I haven't seen in a Purdue team since really my first beat around Purdue or my first serious beat, I guess you should say, I could say, uh, was the 1999 Purdue women's basketball team that won the national title. And there was a certain something around that team where when they were struggling or the opponent was playing really well or they were like down four at half to somebody or something, you figured they had them right where they wanted them. And uh, there was something about this Purdue team this year, or there has been something about this Purdue team this year that's been very, very reminiscent of that. It just a really, really focused group, a really, really unflappable group. And the transformation from one year to the next, this is what happens when people get older, when they get more experienced, when they mature. And as I've said for 12 months, last year was not Purdue's opportunity because the guards were young. This year was Purdue's opportunity. That became the case as soon as Zach Eady announced he was coming back. It is remarkable what Purdue did this year to get through the grind that was this season to carry around the weight of what happened last season, get right back to this spot, and to, again, I don't want to use the term finish the job because Purdue's got two more games to play potentially, at least one more game to play. Um, but to do something that no Purdue team has done in decades, in a, gener 
in a generation and a half, basically, would be a good way to put it. Just a really, really special group here uh, that Purdue put together uh, and uh, was afforded time to develop together. That's a big part of this, too, uh, is these guys are legitimately close. They've had an opportunity to grow together as a team, you know, kind of stuff like that. And uh, what you have seen from this is just a really, really special team here uh, for Purdue that, again, did something that um, no Purdue team has done in a very long time. The messaging, the symbolism, the whatever imagery after this wasn't as much about this Purdue team as it was all those that came before it. This this is a program that really takes its past seriously, that really keeps people in the fold, provided they want to be in the fold. Um, and in a lot of ways, this Purdue team kind of made this for them. This you know, is about Zach Eady. This is about Matt Painter. This is about Fletcher Lawyer, Braden Smith on down the line. But it's also about Gene Cady. It's about Robbie Hummel. It's about Larry Clisby. It's about Tom Ryder. It's about people who were here to see this, that this means a lot to, but also people who weren't here to see this, um, who this would have meant the world to. Um, just a very, very tight circle this program keeps and uh you saw a lot of guys here a lot of former players here um because they wanted to be part of this should it happen and to a man everybody in that locker room uh spoke about that about how important it was to do this for all of those people that came before and uh that's one of the best parts of this story for purdue from a human perspective um, if you saw the clip of Robbie Hummel um, breaking down in tears as as Matt Painter came over for the post game radio show, that is that's what the NCAA tournament's all about. And that's what you know Purdue basketball is all about. That's the investment that they pride themselves on making. It's the relationships that they pride themselves on building. You know stuff like that. I don't want to make this sound like a Purdue basketball infomercial, um, but that moment was as poignant human moment as I've seen in decades doing this um, I can't read my handwriting uh, you'd think at this point of the season my handwriting would have improved or my eyesight my ability to decipher my own chicken scratch uh, legacy you know uh, again the story of this team's not completely written yet uh, it's already achieved a very very significant goal uh, here but it's also got more to play for here. And uh, this has been a team, again, that has just been very businesslike, very professional, very consistent in the face of a lot of a uh, four-letter word of your choice being thrown at them. Um, but legacy uh, is something that I'll start talking about now, even though the season is not over. Um, I think... I don't think it was necessary, but I think, and he, I don't think he would say this uh, publicly, but I, I think there's a certain measure of validation uh, for Matt Painter that comes with this. Again, I don't think that was necessary, um, but you have to understand the NCAA tournament is a funhouse mirror. It is, it distorts the reality of everything. Matt Painter has been one of the better coaches in all of college basketball, one of the most respected people, one of the most well-liked people in his profession for years now, but the NCAA tournament is the prism with which people view programs, and that's not fair. This is a very random event. It oftentimes comes down to luck. Um, guys get jobs based off getting hot at the right time. Guys lose jobs by not being hot at the right time, you know, stuff like that. It is just distorted reality. It is the most randomized championship event. I think, in sports, to the point where it's almost an illegitimate championship. That's just my opinion. But obviously, over the years, Purdue's had a lot of opportunities uh, to do something like this. They have had horrific luck. That is a huge part of this. You have to be lucky. The Virginia thing, Virginia could practice that play a hundred times against no one, and they would probably not make that play more than 
25 times. Isaac Haas breaking his elbow right behind me, right over there. I don't know if you can see that or not. I think Purdue could have beaten Villanova that year. They would have beaten Texas Tech that year. They could have beaten Villanova. That was a shot. The two Robbie Hummel knee injuries, obviously, you know all about those. Um, just terrible luck that this program has had in that sense. And there was bound to be a market correction at some point, if that's the appropriate term to use when it comes to good fortune or misfortune, one or the other. Um, we don't get what we deserve in this world. Uh, that's that's my personal worldview uh, all the time. But Purdue had something coming uh, to it based on all of the things that went against it over the years. And, you know, when you respect the game, the way, you know, Purdue has carried itself in accordance with, does that make any sense? I completely lost track of that sentence. When you respect the game, the way Purdue uh, prides itself on doing, um, you would think eventually that breakthrough is going to come. So, um the glass ceiling is finally broken. Purdue has reached the final weekend of the NCAA tournament. They've won the regional. They are going to the final four. Um, again, it was going to happen eventually. It was just a matter of continuing to get good teams. Eventually, you were going to get some, some breaks. This had nothing to do with breaks. Um, you know, uh, the thing about the Virginia story, it's an easy, convenient storyline, uh, a parallel to draw. But it has nothing to do with Purdue. It has nothing to do with Purdue. Because Virginia's Virginia, Purdue's Purdue. That run of luck that Virginia had that year, not to take anything away from what they did, you do make your own luck. You do have to put yourself in position for luck to matter. But the bounces Virginia got that year to propel them to the national title was unlike anything I, this tournament's probably ever seen. This Purdue team just beat everybody. They beat the crap out of the first two teams they played. Uh, they outlasted Gonzaga, pulled away from them, won pretty easily. Today, um, you know, I always compare this to the line in The Dark Knight where the Joker's hanging upside down and he, he tells Batman that the two of them are destined to do this forever because one of them is too stubborn to kill the Joker. That would be Batman. Batman is too stubborn or too driven by some sort of misguided sense of righteousness to kill the Joker. And the Joker won't kill Batman because he's just too much fun. And I think Purdue and Tennessee, I keep coming back to that quote that they are destined to do this forever. These games have been unbelievable. You have to give Tennessee a lot of credit. That was a Final Four caliber team that Purdue beat in Maui or Honolulu. That was a Final Four caliber team that Purdue beat here tonight. And it just today. It just speaks to the toughness, the resolve, the unflappable, unflappability, uh, the poise. Poise is a proper word. Unflappability is no such thing. Um, the, the, the poise that this team ha has built through its experiences, the only thing that mattered to this team in regards to what happened in last year's NCAA tournament was what it made this team. It toughened them. It thickened their skin. It it made this group what this group is to a certain extent. Obviously, experience mattered. Obviously, having good players mattered. Um, great scheme mattered. But the toughness that I think came from that experience last season, I think, really uh, forged this team into a into something special. One of the obviously the great teams Purdue's ever seen. Um, one bound for the Final Four now. So NC State uh, is up next for Purdue. Of, of all teams, again, the most randomized championship event in sports. You get hot at the right time. You go from getting fired one week to um, being in the Final Four the next. It, it, it's just every year this, this tournament's completely drunk. And this year I think it drank more than ever. Uh, even though there was a lot of quote-unquote chalk. I still haven't figured out. After all these years, I don't know what the word chalk means. I don't know where it came from. I don't want to know what it means. And I don't intend to find out. Um, but, um, yeah, so Purdue's head to the Final Four. Huge moment for Purdue. Some hilarious moments after the game. Uh, Zach Eady intercepting Matt Painter on his way to shake Rick Barnes' hand to hug him. 
uh, you really see how much these guys wanted this for Matt Painter. And if you don't know Matt Painter, if you've not been around him behind the scenes, if, if you don't understand the coach he's become, um, which isn't to say the coach he, he has been, but the coach he's become, um, these guys love him. And um, it's, uh, you know, something that uh, – really came out during this NCAA tournament run, how much they wanted to do this for him and how much those guys mean to him, too. I, I've said before, when you hear Zach Eady talking, or I'm sorry, when you hear Matt Painter talking about Zach Eady, it's not admiration, it's not appreciation, it's genuine love. And when you see Robbie Hummel um, talking about Purdue at the end there on the radio and then Painter comes over and they have that moment, you just see how much Matt Painter has meant to these guys and how much these guys have meant to Matt Painter and it's just the human stuff that comes out in this event is really the coolest thing I cover it sucks when you have to cover a losing locker room after a game it's the worst thing we do in this job um, but seeing the emotion come out of both teams both sides of it that's something people can't hide and our jobs are such that we normally get the curated stuff, the manufactured press conference stuff, the, the rehearsed stuff. But when your career is either continuing or ending at the end of a game like this, you can't hide what happens. You can't hide what comes out there. That's kind of awkward when you're dealing with young people and they can't necessarily run from um, uncomfortable emotions. Um, but it is a really interesting thing um, that comes out during this tournament. That's why I think this is the best event in sports. There's a lot of stuff behind the scenes with all this that's kind of a meat market, but it is a really interesting sports story. It's a really interesting human story, and I think now Purdue is on the right side of the human story part of it, um, you know, for the first time since a lot of us were children. Um, so that's why I got here from – Little Caesars Arena, uh, which has been good to Purdue with the exception of one broken elbow uh, several years ago. Um, so that's what I got uh, from Detroit, Michigan, right, as opposed to all the other Detroits. Um, so thank you to the Purdue Club Hotel once again. Text me your address in Phoenix, and I will book that tonight. Um, I'm sure there's got to be a Purdue Club Hotel in Glendale or Phoenix or Mesa or Yuma, uh, whatever cities uh, there are actually in Arizona, Tucson maybe, I don't know. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for reading. Thank you for listening. And thank you for processing our materials, however it is you process our materials. And please keep me in your thoughts as I deal with a phone that is on 15% battery. This is crisis mode. Crisis mode uh, for me because I am one of those obnoxious people. So thanks, everybody.